Uh, Neil is, of course, a tremendous writer, uh, a tremendous uh, person, a tremendous talker. We're incredibly lucky to have him for something like an hour, and he can't get away. So uh, let's get started. Let's start by having you read something. Brilliant. Have Good, you pick, right? Picked out read a us a few paragraphs. American gods. There are worse ways to spend your time. They walked down the drive, side by side. He opened the garage door, and she started to laugh. Oh, my God, she said when she saw the forerunner. Paul Gunther's car. You bought Paul Gunther's car. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shadow opened the door for her. Then he went around and got in. You know the car? When I came up here two or three years ago to stay with Mags, it was me that persuaded him to paint it purple. <laughs> oh, said Shadow. It's good to have someone to blame. <laughs> he drove the car out onto the street, got out and closed the garage door, got back into the car. Sam was looking at him oddly as he got in, as if the confidence had begun to leak out of her. He put on his seatbelt and she said, I'm scared. This was a stupid thing to do, wasn't it? Getting into a car with a psycho killer. I got you safe home last time, said Shadow. You killed two men, she said. You're wanted by the feds, and now I find out you're living under an assumed name next door to my sister. Unless Mike Ainsel is your real name? No, said Shadow, and he sighed. It's not. He hated saying it. It was as if he was letting go of something important, abandoning Mike Ainsel by denying him as if he were taking his leave of a friend. Did you kill those men? No. They came to my house and said, we'd been seen together, and this guy showed me photographs of you. What was his name, Mr. Hat? No, Mr. Town. That was him. It was like the fugitive. But I said I hadn't seen you. Thank you. So, she said, tell me what's going on. I'll keep your secrets if you keep mine. I don't know any of yours, <laughs> said Shadow. Well, you know that it was my idea to paint this thing purple, <laughs> thus forcing Paul Gunther to become such an object of scorn and derision for several counties around that he was forced to leave town entirely. <laughs> we were kind of stoned, <laughs> she admitted. I doubt that bit of it's much of a secret said Shadow. Everyone in Lakeside must have known it's a stoner, sort of purple. <laughs> and then she said, very quiet, very fast, if you're going to kill me, please don't hurt me. I shouldn't have come here with you. I am so dumb. I am so fucking, fucking dumb. I should have run away or called the cops when I first saw you. I can identify you, Jesus. I am so dumb. <laughs> I, I, I want to drag as much uh, out of you as possible about American Gods 2, which probably isn't very much. But I have a theory that America has gotten less odd in these past 10 years. I mean, there's these wonderful pockets of local oddness that, you know, you, that you, you, you sort of chivied out in American gods. Um, but now those people have uh, 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 broadband and the internet. And now they look at themselves and say, well, that is pretty odd. No, they don't. Do no, they no, not? no, honestly, love. <laughs> You, you obviously have never been on this thing called the internet. Well, the internet, what, 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 what happens on the internet, first of all, nobody odd thinks they're odd. One of the rules. Um, so what actually happens is they go, all of, all of the people in America who've been going, everybody in this town thinks I'm weird, but I'm not. <laughs> Head out onto the internet and go, anyone like me around? And in every town, there's somebody going, yep. <laughs> And now, they, they band together into these little cities. <laughs> but they're notional cities, because right. you know, there, there was a point a few days ago where I, it, it was one of those moments where the limitations of Twitter were brought upon me. Um, I'd gone off to write. And I'd gone off to write, and I had this stuff that had to get finished, and it hadn't been getting finished, and... There was just too much noise, too many people to talk to, dogs to walk, beehives to tend. I, I, 
And I fled, and I went to, I borrowed a house from my friend Jonathan Ross in Florida that he was almost never in, and um, went to Jonathan's house. And, you know, 10 days into this, having not actually seen another soul, um, just down there writing, actually that's not true, I, every now and then I go to the supermarket and buy food, and I'd be very nice to the checkout people, because, hello, human contact, I mean, I'd go like, <laughs> um, and there was a point where, you know, we're sort of in day 12 of this, and I tweeted something like, you know, getting a lot of work done, but it's kind of lonely, and somebody tweeted me back and said, how can you be lonely with 1.6 million Twitter followers? <laughs> and I wrote a reply to him. I looked at my reply and I thought, no, and I deleted it. <laughs> um, but the, delete, the reply that I'd sent him just said, could you make me a cup of tea? <laughs> um, uh -huh. we, we've got a, just the audience questions. Time. Good, all right, we're going to the audience questions which are written on these cards. All right, another question. I know you like punk rock. It's true. And it helped you with your writing. True? Yep, very true. What are some of your favorite punk slash pop punk bands? What a great question. Um, <laughs> bands I loved. I loved the adverts, now almost completely forgotten, represented mostly by a gentleman named T.V. Smith. But I thought the adverts, who were the first band, with their, were really the first punk single with a song called One Chord Wonders were incredibly smart, incredibly literate, ahead of their time. Um, I loved Ian Dury, of uh, Ian Dury and the Blockheads, who just a wonderful lyricist and poet who was swept up in, in that punk thing. Obviously, um, I loved the Pistols, but I loved the Pistols as much for what they were as the music they made. Mm. I was much less likely to be playing Never Mind the Bollocks, but I was really pleased I had a copy. Um, you know, I did, it wasn't that I disliked the stuff I liked, and especially liked the singles, which I kind of felt they mucked up a bit on the album. Mm. Um, the earlier singles I thought were great. I liked The Clash, obviously, but everybody liked The Clash. Um, loved The Ramones. And then there were all these weird things that were sort of folded into punk at the time that, you know, when I was talking to Amanda Palmer, my wife, not <laughs> the Amanda from the card earlier, um, about, I, w I was talking about, you know, things that I'd loved at that time, which included, you know, first draft Elvis Costello, before he was even with the Attractions, and um, the Stranglers, and she was saying, well, aren't they New Wave? And I was saying, well, yeah, but at that, you know, end of 1976, early 1977, we weren't going, this is punk, this is New Wave, we're going, oh, this is, this is awesome stuff, and it's wonderful, it's all sort of, you know, loud and fast and smart and being made by people who, don't look like hippies. And <laughs> honestly, it was the fact that none of them looked like they could be in yes that made us happiest. All right, last question. Do you think robots will take over the human race? Do I think robots will take over the human race? I'm so glad you asked that. I'm so very, very glad you asked me that question because I've been sitting here the whole time thinking, I wonder if at some point somebody in the audience is gonna go, are robots gonna take over? <laughs> Um, hang on, I just want a quick shout out. Who was it who actually asked the question? Somebody has to say me, because, okay. Are you worried about this? Okay. Let me put your mind at ease. As a best-selling and award-winning author, I can categorically say that robots will not take over the human race. You're good. Well, thank God that's settled. I think that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Neil Game. <laughs>